If you've got a large cryptocurrency portfolio, you don't want to have to manually enter the price into your spreadsheet to calculate the value of your portfolio. You want something that can automatically pull the prices from a leading cryptocurrency website, which is what you're going to learn in this video. Hey everyone and welcome back. This is the part-time economist and in today's video we are going to be continuing where we left off with Google Sheets and again remember that we were designing this spreadsheet to keep track of our cryptocurrency portfolio. Now as I said this could really keep track of anything. If you invested in gold, if you had silver, if you um, were a store and you had different amounts of inventory on hand and you wanted to track how the price of your inventory was changing due to the market. Anything that we want to really keep track of a change in value, we can do that uh, with Google Sheets. Now, if you remember from the previous video, we talked about setting up the spreadsheet we entered some formulas and we basically set this to automatically calculate and update as the price changed. But the weak point of this was that we had to go back and manually enter the price. So if we've got one or two cryptocurrencies, not a big deal. But if we have a thousand cryptocurrencies, we don't want to go and check a thousand different prices and enter them manually. Number one, it's time consuming. Number two, we can easily make mistakes. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, I call it web scraping. I don't know if that's the exact technical term for it, um, but we're going to be pulling data directly from CoinMarketCap's website. So just to give you a heads up, data scraping is basically when you will get data from a website, you will pull it into your program, to your application and use it for your own purposes. Now, Depending on what you're scraping, it's important to always make sure that you're allowed to do this, right? You don't want to scrape a whole lot to where you're basically overloading the website. Um, so keep it reasonable. Make sure you're doing it on a site that wants you to do it. Um, as you can see here, CoinMarketCap has an article talking about data scraping. So uh, I, think, I think it'll be okay if we just show for the example purposes, getting one or two prices here. Obviously, though, it is important to make sure that you're scraping from a website where it is okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to go back to our spreadsheet and for this value what we see is we've basically just uh, copy and pasted the price from CoinMarketCap but we don't want to do that because the prices are always changing. So in order to get a dynamic price what we are going to do and I'm going to do this in a separate cell first so you can see the difference. If we want a dynamic price, the real up to date price, right? Maybe we want to check our portfolio every five minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to use an import function. So we're going to go to IMPORT and what we want to import is XML. There's a couple different ways you can import that you can web scrape, but I have found this to be the easiest as well as the most straightforward. So we're going to go to import XML and when we do that, what we see is that it's going to open those parentheses. We're going to need two arguments to put into this. So the first is the website. So where are we going for this information? And then second is what information are we going to be extracting from that website? So let's go ahead and we're going to, we're going to call this, oh, we don't want to do that. We'll just, we'll just stay where we are for now. So what we want to do is we want to get the price of Bitcoin. So where's a good place that we can find the Bitcoin price? Well, we can go to um, CoinMarketCap. And what we want to do is I don't want to go just here and find this because this listing could change. One could move up, one could move down. What I want to do is I want to go to the Bitcoin specific page. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to inspect. And what this does, when you look at a web page, it's really wit written with HTML, with CSS, which with all of these different, um, different programming languages. And what this is doing is it's saying, hey, don't show me what I see on the screen. It's saying, show me what the computer sees, right? Show me what does my computer see and how does it interpret this for me? So what we're looking at right now, you can see this 41,239. That's the price that we're seeing. But if we open this up, we're seeing where that is actually located in terms of the website. Now, what we want to do is we want to copy 
this full X path. So it's saying, don't just get this little snippet, give me the full basically path to where this is coming from, right? So we selected our price, we have copied that full X path. And what that is going to be is that is going to be, oh, let's go ahead and put path, that is going to be our path. So that is where in the website we are finding this, right? So that is that is going to be our path. Let's go ahead and enter that. And then we also need the website. So the website is going to be obviously just the main page here for Bitcoin. So go ahead and copy that. So what we've got, we have got the website and we've got a path. Now, if you double click, it will make that cell bigger so you can see the full full text there. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our import XML and we need, as I said, the two arguments. We need this website, so that's telling it where to look. And then we also need this path. So where are we looking? And then inside of that, what are we specifically looking for? And as you can see, it's going to pull that data from the website. So it's going to be up to date every time we open our spreadsheet, it's automatically going to pull that data. Now, we're going to do the exact same thing for these other values as well. So we've got our price here of, let's see, we've got the price of, that should actually be, that should be our Bitcoin. Um, but just to make it easy, we're going to do the exact same thing with all of these. So if we wanted the price for the Ethereum, we're going to do the same thing. What we're going to do, we're going to back out of that. We're going to import XML. And first, this is what I will show you. The, the difference here is if you're, I guess you could call it hard coding the function. If you're putting this directly into the function, you're going to have to pass in your website and your um, X path with parentheses, with uh, quotations, sorry. You're going to have to pass them in with quotations. If you're just copying and pasting them into cells and then using those cells to pass as arguments, then you don't need the quotation. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to Actually, I'll go ahead and show you that. We'll do it both ways just so you can see how it messes up. So let's go back here. CoinMat, Arcit Cap, let's go to Ethereum. What we're going to do, this is the Ethereum main page. So we're going to copy, complete just exact web address. We're going to go to the import XML. We're going to paste that. And then what we're also going to do, we're going to go back to Ethereum. Remember, we're selecting the value here that we want highlight and inspect once we go to inspect and this is this is kind of a, a check on your work as you move through this you can see that it's highlighting different things so this is highlighting exactly what we want so we know it's the correct path so we're going to go to copy let's get that full x path and then what we're going to do just come back up here and paste it in and then this is one of the few times you don't want your code to work and it should Awesome. It gives us an error, which is exactly what we were expecting because when we pass those arguments in directly, we do need to make sure that they are in the quotations. So we're going to go ahead and add in those quotations. And now what you're going to see is that it works. So we see it automatically updates and then we could do the exact same thing for each of these other functions as well. Um, just for now, let's 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 just pretend that we did the same for Bitcoin and basic attention token y'all can go back replay the video if you need to see how it's done but the main takeaway is that if we were doing just the website we could just do the list we could um, set this function and we could drag and drop this function too so if we had I'll just show you an example of that it's going to automatically fill this if we copied our ethereum function over into this and we paste it in this cell and then in this cell, we copy that X path. What you're going to see is it's automatically going to populate that as well. So if we had all our websites, all of our X path, um, basically what we could do, we could just drag and drop it into an autofill. Whatever way you want to do it, just keep in mind if you are inputting that manually, you do have to put your quotations. So that's pretty cool, right? It's going to automatically pull all of those values for you. So whenever you open up your sheet, it's going to be at new values. Now, one thing that you'll notice, especially in cryptocurrency or cryptocurrency more so even than traditional stocks, because crypto is trading 24-7, um, what you'll notice is that 
you might have your spreadsheet open for 10 minutes and it's not going to refresh, right? It's only going to refresh and pull that data when you open your spreadsheet. So if we wanted this to update every minute, um, getting it to update in real time is a lot of programming, a lot of work typically not worth it, especially for just kind of a beginner program. But Google Sheets actually has something to make it really easy uh, to update every minute. So you go to File and then Settings, and then what you'll see is it says Calculation. So this affects how often now, today, all of these different things are updated. What we want to do, we want to go ahead and update on change and every minute. So what this is going to do is every minute it's going to go back and it's going to pull repull these values so that we're not working with old data basically. So um, that's just a quick overview how to pull your data in real time. Like I said, you've got two or three cryptos, not a huge deal, but if you've got a thousand cryptocurrencies and you're wanting to track your net worth in crypto, kind of a big deal. And you're probably saying, well, I can just see all the cryptos and most of my wallets have something that tells me how to do this anyway. Yes, exactly, because this is not specifically a cryptocurrency valuation tutorial, right? I'm showing you how to build programs, build these spreadsheets that can update and pull values for really anything, right? So forget about crypto. Let's suppose you're doing, like I said, you have wheat futures or you have um, real estate, whatever the case may be, you can design that. And on top of that, even if we are talking about crypto, um, there's some cryptos that you might have in 10 different wallets, right? And you've got one wallet here, one wallet there. You can design a dashboard to pull all of that info into one place that you wouldn't be able to do without opening 10 different wallets. So again, just another tutorial. I hope you all found it useful. And uh, like I said, let me know, are you all liking these Google Sheets tutorials? Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.